Yeah. Well, we're going to introduce this topic as we go along, and I want to go to this next clip, and we're going to show how the fossils in the Cambrian explosion came to be found. I mean, this is fascinating for folks. Watch. More than a century ago, a stunning window to the Cambrian explosion was opened by a series of discoveries made in Western Canada. In 1886, the Canadian Pacific Railroad reached British Columbia and the Kicking Horse Valley. For the first time, eastern and western Canada were linked by a 2,500-mile steel artery that opened the Rocky Mountains to tourists, adventurers, and men of science. Among them was the geologist R.G. McConnell. Earlier in the year, McConnell had heard reports of a shale bed on the flank of Mount Stephen just outside the town of Field. Railroad carpenters who had explored the area said it was filled with stone bugs. In September, McConnell climbed the mountain. To his amazement, he found unmistakable imprints of prehistoric life on most of the shales in the bed. McConnell was standing in an ocean of fossilized trilobites. Trilobites are icons to the Cambrian, and there are billions of trilobites high up on the shoulder of Mount Stephen. And one reason for that is that as they grew, they periodically threw off their old skeleton and made a new skeleton. So basically, they made many fossils through their individual lives. McConnell collected hundreds of these fossils and sent many of them to other scientists for examination. News of his work soon reached the offices of the United States Geological Survey and Charles Doolittle Walcott, a leading expert on Cambrian paleontology. On August 30th, 1909, Walcott led his team below this ridge, 15 miles north of Mount Stephen. There, legend holds, he stopped to examine a pile of shale that blocked the narrow horse trail. As he picked up a slab, the geologist noticed a faint but well-defined fossil he had never seen before, a delicate lace crab he later named Morella. He knew plenty and plenty about the Cambrian. He was an expert on the Cambrian. He published many papers. And when you see this little Morella, it's only about a centimeter in length. You get out your hand lens, and you suddenly see that this is, you know, shouldn't be there. This is soft-bodied, effectively. And I'm sure he realized in seconds what it meant. He must have. All right, Dr. Meyer, why were these Burgess fossils so important? Well, the, the fossils of the Burgess Shale documented that the Cambrian explosion was even more explosive than Darwin had realized. Now, Darwin was really troubled by the Cambrian explosion and the, just from the fossils that he knew, trilobites and uh, a range of other forms. But he anticipated that future fossil finds would fill in the missing ancestors in the lower Precambrian rocks so that the history of life would look like a great branching tree, as I have on the slide here. Um, but unfortunately, uh, what was discovered from the, the standpoint of a Darwinian theory was that you had this sudden appearance of all the first complex forms of animal life, but the ancestral forms, the sli slightly simpler forms in the lower Precambrian strata uh, did, were, were not present. And the Burgess Shale, rather than documenting those ancestral forms, actually documented a range of new complex animals that even Darwin didn't know about. And so, in effect, the, the discoveries of the, the Burgess Shale showed that the Cambrian explosion had been even more explosive than Darwin anticipated. And so the mystery of those missing fossils was even more acute.